thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is homeless displacement and gentrification in Music City. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about some of the issues involved with uh, the homeless population and gentrification in Nashville, uh, Howard Allen and uh, Jason Rodriguez and Samuel Lester, three of the uh, individuals who have uh, agreed to uh, talk about some of the issues. Let's start off with you, uh, Mr. Allen, by having you to give us some information, <coughs> excuse me, in reference to your background, your education, and some of your experiences, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, Mr. Rodriguez and uh, Mr. Lester will do the same thing during this first segment, and then we'll have an opportunity to go into the second segment dealing with the issue itself, homeless displacement and gentrification in Music City. First, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Haney, for having me on. Uh, I'm a Nashvilleian, and I had two years of college at Tennessee State and a year at Texas Southern, and then I had made some bad decisions and I became homeless. But as I said, I'm a Nashvilleian, and I have a grassroots organization called the Nashville Homeless Underground, and that's how I met Jason Rodriguez and also uh, Samuel Lester here. And me being a Nashvilleian and being out on the streets now, I see changes that have really become a, a serious problem for the homeless population in Nashville. And of course, we'll talk about that population. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, let's talk about uh, your situation. Yeah, so, um, so my educational background is I, I have a bachelor's in sociology and a master's in applied st uh, statistics. Mm -hmm. And um, right, after, uh, right after undergrad, I started working for the state of Georgia. Um, I used to live in, in, the, in the Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. And I worked for the, uh, for, for the housing trust fund for the homeless. And so my role was to analyze um, homelessness data. Mm -hmm. And I did that for about three years. And then I moved to Nashville, Tennessee to start my, uh, uh, my PhD program at uh, Vanderbilt University. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm about two years into the program. I just, um, I'm, I'm in the uh, community research and action program and I mm -hmm. study homelessness full time. Very good, Mr. Lester. Hi, thanks for having us. I uh, have a master's degree in political science uh, taught at Montgomery Bell Academy for 13 years, government and economics and history. And uh, about five years ago, started getting involved in issues of homelessness. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Fulmer mm -hmm. died, froze to death on the steps of a church in East Nashville, not far from where I was living. And uh, I realized the direness of the situation and felt like we needed to do more. For over three years now, I've worked with Open Table Nashville doing street outreach and advocacy with them. Mm -hmm. And so all, <coughs> the three of you are deeply involved with the uh, homeless population one way or the other, uh, studying uh, uh, or uh, assisting, doing whatever you possibly can in terms of dealing with this as an issue. Uh, Mr. Allen, since, uh, and, and, and I think we'll have an opportunity to make some statements in reference to this before the uh, first commercial break. Uh, what? Uh, do we mean when we talk about the homeless population in uh, Nashville, their displacement and gentrification? Give us some statements in reference to the topic itself. Well, the displacement is that they don't have a place to live because they're not building affordable housing for the least of thee. Uh, I live it myself. I'm fighting to get back into housing, so I'm on the street. I live on the street. Uh, there are really two Nashvilles, those that have, those that have not. And what I want to change is bringing people together and know that we're all the same. And it's like two laws. You know, uh, Lady Justice is blindfolded, but it's like we make her stupid here because they're not the same laws being followed. Uh, our mayor, bless her heart, uh, she just passed a workforce affordability housing, but that's for people that make between 25 and fifty thousand dollars where they can pay nine hundred dollars a month i have a disability i get 733 a month so i'm 184 dollars short so we need to fix the problem and we don't have any taxes on these buildings that are being built here which are financed by mdha mm -hmm. and we could put a usage tax on these cranes that are building these buildings which means that the material that they buy must be bought here and then we could have money to build affordable housing for the least of these. Now, Jason, you're looking at it from sort of a statistical and intellectual point of view. And so let's, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to take our first commercial break and we're going to come back and we're going to start with you. And then we'll have an opportunity, Mr. Lester, to allow you and, and, and uh, Jason to have that second uh, 
four minutes. And then we can sort of go into that final segment with some information dealing with uh, gentrification, because I think that that is the uh, real issue uh, this morning. And so, uh, and since I've almost talked this section through, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial break and then we'll start with you coming back and we'll give you those four minutes and then you'll have other four minutes to talk about those. And then on the last segment, we'll deal with gentrification and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. minutes to talk about whatever you wish to talk about dealing with homeless displacement and gentrification okay you do the same thing lester take about uh the four Thank minutes you. this is eight minute segment yeah. you will have four minutes to talk okay. about the mm -hmm. homeless displacement and gentrification and then we'll be through with that segment okay and then we'll come back the last 10 minutes and start with you three minutes three minutes three minutes sound like that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's way we good. could cover because I think the gentrification, that's what we're mm -hmm. really dealing with because mm. when I go around town and I look at all of the different kinds of structures that are going up and et cetera in all of these earlier places, places that at one time uh, housed the homeless and displaced mm -hmm. and, et cetera, and they are no longer and, and now you find those $150,000 uh, condominiums yeah. and et cetera in those same places. <laughs> is, that what, is that what you were talking about yeah. this month? Yeah. Okay. And so then how they're, back, they're uh, taking uh, like Salem Town is Germantown yeah. now. Uh -huh. And they're taking our history. I see you know? it. I see yeah. it. Okay. And so we're going to start with when, when we come back, we're going to start with you, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, and then take about four minutes. And then uh, Jason will, I mean, uh, Samuel will, Lester will start. We, we'll get four okay. minutes out of you. Okay. <clears throat> And I think when we put all these together, these parts together, nobody will tell how we stumble. <laughs> get, get here. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, you know, they, yeah, yeah. can't see the stumbling the that part. goes on. Okay. I should be able to get everything right this time. The minute I say that. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show today. We're talking to Mr. Howard Allen, uh, Mr. Jason Rodriguez, and uh, Mr. Lester, Samuel Lester, in reference to uh, homeless displacement and gentrification in uh, Nash and Music City. Now, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, when we talk about gentrification in uh, Nashville, what are we talking about? Well, um, uh, when we're talking about gentrification, we, we are talking about um, people living um, especially in these older neighborhoods in Nashville who are getting um, displaced um, mainly because of uh, people moving in, in, uh, into the city from, uh, from outside a city or, or into um, poorer neighborhoods from uh, more, more wealthy neighborhoods. And um, uh, there's new, new housing being built, um, new, more expensive housing that um, makes, perhaps makes the aesthetics of of these neighborhoods look better, but in the process it raises these rents and, and, and these housing prices so high that people can no longer afford to live in the, I mean, these neighborhoods. And so that, that is, um, that's causing a lot of problems, one of which is um, um, homelessness for many people. Now, this, this is, is quite common, not only in Nashville, but this is generally sort of a national kind of thing, wherever you find uh, the, uh, the underserved areas, these underserved areas are now being taken over by developers, investors, and et cetera, and different kind of housing place in there that means that these individuals have been, what, driven out. Is that what we're saying in terms of gentrification? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and, and one thing, so one of my, uh, one of my professors, I'm Dr. Jim Frazier, uh, he researches gentrification, and he's noted that Nashville is um, one of the few places where gentrification is happening in multiple neighborhoods um, simultaneously. Uh, usually it happens neighborhood by neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting um, phenomenon here. But it's Nashville. all over Music City, wherever you go in some of the uh, uh, underdeveloped areas, some of the poor mm -hmm. areas, uh, yes. more than anything, you find that these new structures are going up in the, the poor, not only those who are homeless, mm -hmm. but in many instances. Is that the, your, your view of the situation, uh, Lester, in reference to what's going on 
Yeah, I think it's important to remember that these are families, <coughs> children, these oh. are people whose lives are in crisis. A fifth of the city struggles in poverty. Mm. And as rents go up, people are forced out of their houses, either into other parts or even outside of the city, and they're taxpayers. They have a right to live here. They've, their families have lived here often for generations. But unfortunately, as they go up often, they end up on the street as well. We have about some 15,000 people who are experiencing homelessness, including 3,000 school children. And uh, their daily lives are made more and more uh, frantic with the increasing poverty and their instability. And there's another kind of displacement going on as well. People who are experiencing homelessness struggle to survive on the streets and often find refuge in one of the over 200 camps through the city. Mm -hmm. But the city has begun actually pushing those camps and trying to destroy the camps. Mm -hmm. uh, they most recently uh, closed Fort Negley, but now they've begun to move to close camps along the greenways in Nashville. This destabilizes people, it pushes them further into poverty, further into homelessness, makes it much more difficult to get their lives back together. Mm -hmm. I'm working, I, this morning I helped uh, a young couple with a child apply for an apartment. Mm -hmm. They were recently living with another couple that we'd just gotten into housing last year, mm -hmm. who also were hosting